Welcome to In The Workshop. This is about fitting a heat shield to the Castle Steam V6 boiler ash pan. Michael at Castle Instruments kindly sent me this and this is a heat shield that fits between the ash pan and the main mounting base of the boiler. And the Castle V6 boiler really does need a heat shield like this. When I first tested it in the garden, the base that I put it on was reduced to charcoal. When gas firing this boiler, it's not a problem, but when coal firing it, it's a different thing altogether. The way the drafting is arranged and the way the thing ventilates, the fire gets incredibly hot. And even though the substantial cast iron base that I made for the boiler has a large hole in the middle to reduce the surface area of the ash pan in contact with the base, it still got too hot. So hopefully, fitting this heat shield between the ash pan and the main boiler base should do the trick. The design of this boiler is very well thought out. It just sits on the ash pan, and all you do is disconnect the piping and lift the entire boiler off the ash pan. This allows for quick and easy cleaning out of the ash pan after a run on coal. And here's the complete ash pan, quite clean after the last run. Being able to quickly and simply lift the boiler off the ash pan is also a good idea should the water inadvertently run low. The ash pan is made from stainless steel, but the bolts I used to hold the ash pan to the cast iron part are not made from stainless steel, so they go rusty. I intend to replace these with stainless steel bolts, but first of all I think it's a good idea to get rid of the rusty ones. And now I've lifted the ash pan off the cast iron base, and you can see how discoloured the stainless steel is, and the rust residue around the base. When I ran the boiler using steam, this didn't happen, there was no rust but the last run that I gave this boiler was on compressed air to test the water pump. I remember it well because there was water splashing about everywhere and obviously some's got into the base, probably through the exhaust inlet from the pump. To make the heat shield fit the boiler properly, I have to drill some more holes because the holes I drilled in the base were in a different position to the ones pre-drilled in the heat shield. Now the base is free of the ash pan, I thought it was an ideal opportunity to give it another coat of heat-resistant paint. So it's into the outer part of the workshop and with a cloth on the main vise I'm treating the base to another coat of high temperature paint. Then I sat the base on an electric convector heater to dry the paint quickly and bake it on. I managed to drill all of the holes in the correct place and here to prove that here are five allen bolts in the holes. This baseboard was originally used for another boiler. It was also a 6 inch diameter boiler but made of stainless steel. I'm using the original mounting holes to fit a metal plate on top of the laminated material that forms the top of the main wooden base. And this is what I'm going to fit, it's a piece of 3mm thick stainless steel sheet. I carefully marked out two points on the stainless steel that correspond with the holes in the base, then I screwed two of the bolts in position, and then from underneath, using a scriber, I marked out the position of the other two bolts. And once I drilled a couple more holes at this point, I could fit the original allen bolts down into the wood. Now you may think this is a bit odd. I'm screwing the allen bolts directly into the wood. Some discerning viewers may be critical of this, but never mind, this is a very low stress component. And also, very shortly, it's going to have a Castle Steam V6 boiler, complete with ash pan and base, sat on top of it, so it's going nowhere. I'm fitting some temporary bolts to hold the ash pan to the base because I didn't have any stainless steel ones. When I did this job it was a Sunday afternoon and most of the shops were closed. But during the week I'll go to my bolt supplier and buy some M6 Allen Caphead stainless steel bolts. The only problem now is the boiler is higher than it was originally. Not just with the heat shield but with the stainless steel plate. In this clip I'm tightening up the water pipe that goes from the water pump to one of the check valves. This wasn't a problem, I just re-bent it slightly and it fitted OK. Similarly, with the main steam feed pipe to the water pump, this was carefully re-bent to the correct position and fitted in place OK. But there's a bit of a problem with the water piping from the pump. Here's the T-piece that I made, and this is the part that the bypass valve is screwed into. But to be honest, I never liked this arrangement. It was far too low in the system. There was far too much random piping around the bottom part of the boiler, and all of it was too close to the handle of the hand pump anyway. 
As I said previously, it's a Sunday afternoon and I've also run out of quarter-inch copper pipe. During the week when I go out and buy the bolts that I need, I will also go up to Blackgate's Engineering and buy some quarter-inch diameter copper pipe. And in the next video, before steaming the boiler on coal in the garden, I'll show the new arrangement for the copper piping. What I have to do first is fit a mechanical lubricator to a Stuart 5A that I have, that belongs to a customer. Then I will pipe it to the boiler and have an afternoon steaming in the garden because the weather's definitely getting better. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.